Also, it's no longer an adventure game unless there's a quote from a famous explorer that's tied to the plot of the game. It's a borderline trope at this point. Look, I know this is a video game, but Nathan Drake is not a superhero, at least as far as I can tell. He is shot in the stomach, bleeding profusely, and hanging off a cliff inside of a train. I don't care how you spin it, this motherfucker should be dead right now, especially considering the events that led up to this point in the game. And to make matters worse, the game is going to try to convince us that Nate has enough strength to climb himself back up through the train car that is hanging off a mountain. Don't get me wrong, it does make for a cool segment, but it's still a sin. Buy me a drink, sailor. Harry Flynn? Hey! What the hell are you doing here? You know, that is a very good question. From what I can tell, Drake is drinking near a beach resort at a bar with no bartender and him seemingly being the only person there. How Flynn knew where Drake is without Drake knowing about it intrigues me, but we will never know. So I'm just gonna call this a sin of convenience. You're not gonna like this. The, you're not gonna like this trope. Whoa, whoa, who the fuck are you and where is Elena? From what I remember, her and Drake were riding off into the sunset together in the last game, and I distinctly remember Elena saying that Drake owed her one. Well, uh, that's alright. There'll be other stories. You still owe me one. Game completely glosses over relationship details, and I am not okay with that. In Trebizond, we were set upon by thieves. Father, Maffeo, and I were robbed of our greatest treasures. This was written by Marco Polo. Yes, that much we were able to work out. Unfortunately, the rest of it's nonsense. How the fuck were you guys able to read only parts of the message when all of it is written in the same language? I concealed my great sorrow in the unlikeliest place. The light of the great Khan shelters the fate of the Thirteen. See what I mean? It's just gibberish. He's talking about the Lost Fleet. Yeah. I don't know, someone want to fill me in? Apparently, Flynn completely forgot as to why he tracked Nate down to offer him this dangerous job and know exactly what it is that they were after. A terrible soldier of fortune he most certainly is. I and mean, what could possibly go wrong? Pro tip, if you wanted to start your game off in Medias Res, then you should have started off with this, followed by the segment where Drake is dangling from a mountain in a train. Now that would have been much more comedic. I shouldn't be giving this pro tip, because this is Naughty Dog we're talking about. One of the few game developers out there that aren't a bunch of incompetent ass Hats. When I figured out he was actually on to something, I thought you'd want to be in on the action. What a cock tease. Probably not a wise idea to be pointing the spear end of that dagger towards your stomach. You sure you're up for this? Why is Drake asking that question when Flynn was the one who came to him with the job? Flynn, they're just museum guards. We have their patrols all mapped out. Relax. Whoa, whoa, wait a damn minute. As I recall, at first you were the one who refused to go through with this plan because it was so dangerous that two people that you knew died trying to break into this place. Oh no. No, you're out of your mind. Yeah, you just, just hear me out. No, no. Flynn, we both know two people who were killed trying to lift something out of this and place. One. Now you're the one that's acting like it's no big deal? Have you ever been in a Turkish prison, mate? If we get caught, they will lock us up and throw away the sodding key. You do realize that, don't you? How is that different from any other prison that exists? You would think that a museum that holds such a precious artifact would have a better security system in place, but I see that the sewers are still easily accessible. Chloe. See you on the other side. What other side? And other side of what? Context, motherfucker. Learn it. I pick more than my nose, my friend. I did not need to be told that. Wait! There's an alarm. Here's another failure of this museum's security. Power switch in the same room as the alarm. I see that the cover system in this series is still straight garbage. Video game cliche number 27. If the game is not based around stealth, you can bet your ass there's gonna be some random stealth segment somewhere in the game. These guards have terrible peripheral vision. It's time to tip the odds back in our favor. Oh, that's brilliant. Guns? What are you thinking? Relax, Gandhi. They're tranquilizer guns. Totally non-lethal. Flynn had these tranquilizer guns this entire time, yet only now decides to bring them out. All right, there's the tower. Getting closer. Appreciate that update, Captain Obvious. If Nate was real, we would hire him, because he would be excellent at gaming sins. <coughs> oh! Oh! oh I, gotcha! Pull me up! You put on weight, mate! Pull me up! Worst security guard ever. There's a guard right below you. How does Flynn know that guard is there when he can't even see him? We can't get any closer with the tower lit up like that. What the hell's she doing? Come on, Chloe. Convenient timing is convenient. 
The one spot that could benefit having security guards and an alarm doesn't have security guards and an alarm. No laser alarm on one of the most precious artifacts that you have? Man, this game is proving what a failure of a security system this museum really has. Marco Polo found Shambhala. Kinda like how your man Francis Drake found El Dorado? Ha! Cue the rehashes! Oh yeah, right. You're the mastermind. Only you overlooked one little detail. Didn't you, partner? What? The obnoxious, arrogant British asshat turns out to be a traitor? Huh, <laughs> that one flew over my head. So what are you gonna do, shoot me now? No, I just need you out of the way for a little while. Classic villain cliche number one, torturing your enemy instead of outright killing them, thus giving them the opportunity to make a comeback and get revenge. Even after being in a Turkish prison for three months, Nate's hair remains immaculate. Hey, how'd you find me? Well, a uh, friend of yours asked for my help. Hello, Nate. Oh, no. No. Now, wait a second. Sully, kick her out and shut the door. We're safer in here. Why is Nate getting upset with Chloe when she had nothing to do with Flynn's betrayal? Are you in? Oh, hell yes. I was in before you were. If you have a dirty mind like I do, then you already know why this is a sin. Here it is. I also left the detonator for you. Not a wise move, considering any asshole can come across these charges and know that something suspicious is going on. Lazarevich's camp isn't immediately alerted with all the gunfire. I mean, you're in a freaking jungle. You know when gunshots are being fired. You should be getting close to the first camp. I've planted four more charges in there, but you're going to have to clear the place out before you can arm them. Chloe plants the charges, yet doesn't take the simple amount of time to arm them. I mean, I know they do this for game purposes, but it's still a sin. Explosive barrels that only exist to advance the gameplay. Regenerative health. Okay, I'm being really nitpicky here, but wouldn't red indicate that you've disarmed the charge and not arm it? How did anyone get this jeep here when there are no entry points on any side? Enough of this frivolity, kid. Come on, we got work to do. What does frivolity mean? Professional thief and treasure hunter Nathan Drake doesn't know what frivolity means. Hell, even my dumbass knows what that word means. I practice it every day. Villain hurting or killing one of his henchmen to prove how evil he is, cliche. Man, this Lazarevich guy isn't screwing around, Sully. You should see all this stuff. He's got files on every expedition to find Shambhala. All the way back to the 1600s. Just like in the previous game, all the documents that Drake is looking for just so happen to be laid out right in front of him when he's looking for them. Nate. Well, oh, that's convenient. I love it when characters in the game pretty much do my job for me. Hello. What do we have here? With any luck... The last resting place of Marco Polo's crew. So you mean to tell me that Lazarevich has been trying to pick up Marco Polo's trail back to Shambhala for three months and yet didn't realize the remains of Polo's crew was this close to his campsite? Three months and you have found nothing. <laughs> this fucker's already lost villain points. <laughs> I see that even Uncharted is not capable of resisting pointless jump scares. This is blood. It's everywhere. It's like a real massacre. All right, let's follow the bloodstains. Game is actually trying to convince me that bloodstains remain visible after 800 some odd years. Hell, I knew somebody who was mauled by a mountain lion 20 years ago. I'm willing to bet if I went to that exact spot where he was killed with a black light, I would not find any bloodstains. Yeah, I know, it's a video game, but it's still a sin. I feel like I've seen this image before. Speaking of which, why is it that every explorer who doesn't want their treasure to be found inexplicably leave clues behind that leads to their treasure? That seems to be a running theme throughout this series and I am already getting tired of it. Oh, God damn it. Come on. Harry! In here! Don't let it's Drake! What the hell are- Get your hands up. Look, I know that Chloe's going undercover, but if she was planning to save Nate and Sully, then I don't see how this accomplishes that, seeing as how Lazarevich killed one of his men for stealing a simple trinket and they possess the very thing that he's looking for. But I'm sure we will have one of those moments where the villain has the perfect opportunity to kill our protagonist, but never takes said opportunity. <laughs> Oh, shit. Are you all right? Yeah, well, it'll make it look more believable. Now I'm going to try and buy you some time. No, Chloe, you have to come with us. No. Just meet me in Nepal. Chloe has absolutely no reason to stay with Lazarevich, seeing as how the entire reason why she went undercover was to plant the charges so that Nate and Sully could detonate them. And that mission's already completed. And it's even more sinful knowing that Chloe actually does meet up with Nate in Nepal, so why the fuck couldn't she just go with him in the first place? I'm getting too old for this bullshit. Ah, uh, I was waiting for Sully to say that line. The overused running away while things are chasing after you sequence. 
See, why isn't the entire level like this, where Nate has to navigate through the civil war that's been engaged here? I mean, hell, Chloe even mentioned it earlier. When you said Lazarevich had a head start on us, you weren't kidding. Well, he's had some help from the local guerrillas. The city's been on the brink of civil war for years. He just needed to throw a little gasoline on the fire. So I'm sitting this game for not creating a more interesting Nepal level. <laughs> Seems like I am always saving your ass. Which reminds me, saving the hero in the nick of time cliche. So this is the key to everything. Yes it is. Marco Polo's passport to Shambhala. Yeah, you know, that same thing we talked about in Borneo. In his journal, he wrote that uh, the worthy seeker would be given a golden passport to conquer obstacles on the journey to Shambhala. Seems like even the characters within the game have the memory span of a fly. This rifle has terrible zoom. It must be a Naughty Dog trait because they did the same thing in The Last of Us, and that game came out four years after this one. I'm sorry, do you have a plan to go along with that grenade? Yes, I do. I'm gonna circle around this way, break up their little party. Aren't you forgetting about somebody? Well, that's where you come in, sweetheart. I need you to take care of him. But, uh, do it quietly. Chloe suggests Nate eliminate a guy quietly while she plans on using a grenade to break up a party. The contradiction is strong in this one. Turret cliche. I see that the Mass Effect elevator decided to make an appearance. Looks like the circuit breaker's on the top floor. Why? When there's a circuit breaker right in front of you. And that circuit breaker should be the one that fixes the elevator that's right next to it. <laughs> hey, check it out. Marco! Really? Come on. No. Marco! You know, I really appreciate that they took the time to include this easter egg in the game. Minus one sin. Stupid AI partner. No! Well, give me the cutscene, you fools. Ay ay ay. This asshole cannot hit his target. Game rips off the Hind D boss battle from Metal Gear Solid. Minus one cent for this collapsing building set piece. I wish more games would include segments like this. Nate, look out! Apparently, this chopper is trained in stealth, seeing as how it literally popped out of nowhere. Whoa! Hey, hey, don't you! Hey! <laughs> it's a small world after all. What's your angle on all this misery? You gonna plunder a few temples, loot the museum? If memory serves me correctly, I knew somebody else who wanted to engage in similar activities and wanted to do it with more enthusiasm. I am here off the coast of Panama where we just recovered what we believe to be the coffin of legendary explorer Sir Francis Drake. We're on the trail of the lost treasure of El Dorado and it's brought us here to this tiny island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So that's it. You're just gonna forget about the treasure and forget about Drake? Gee, can't remember who. Suppose you're here for some noble crusade, right? Actually, we're trailing a fugitive war criminal. Zoran Lazarevich, have you heard of him? So, in this entire world, Drake just so happens to come across Elena, who just so happens to be searching for Lazarevich, who just so happens to be searching for the same thing as Drake, that just so happens to be in the same city that all of them are currently in. Now this is plot convenience if I ever saw it. Glad you find this so funny. Well, it's just I never figured you for the white bread picket fence type. Hey, she's a lot tougher than she looks, thank you. Hmm. Oh. Oh, what? She broke your heart. Oh, please. She did, hey, you didn't know what? she? Maybe I broke hers. Oh, yes, Casanova. You know, if you're going to include a scene like this, you could at least explain how or why Drake and Elena parted ways with each other since they were clearly riding off into the sunset together in the last game. This game will not even bother. Oh, my goodness. Naughty Dog, you disappoint me. For a developer that pays so much attention to detail, I cannot believe you failed one of the most basic tests in game design. The fire mechanic. The cardinal rule is, if your character is standing over any sort of fire, it should always affect said character. That is not the case here. This shit is unacceptable and worth five sins on its own. 
So I'm guessing it's not a coincidence that we ended up here? You would be wrong. Just what is it you're after, anyway? See that symbol up there? It's called the Chintamani Stone. Nate? It's a massive raw sapphire. It's worth millions. So let me get this straight. You're competing with a psychopathic war criminal for a mythological gemstone? Is that any different than what you two did by chasing after El Dorado while competing with Roman and Navarro in the last game? It takes five hours for the first real puzzle of the game. Also, and I should have pointed this out in the last Uncharted Sins video, how is it that Nate already has puzzle solutions to a temple that he never actually came across before? The answer to this question is simply video game purpose. Wait a minute. What is it? Chloe, this isn't just a dagger. It's a key. Well, no shit, silly. That's exactly what Marco Polo meant by passport. You even mentioned this earlier. In his journal, he wrote that uh, the worthy seeker would be given a golden passport to conquer obstacles on the journey to Shambhala. I found the door it opened. We've done it. Well, technically, I did it. Nate proves once again that he would be excellent at gaming sins. Well, somebody clearly saw Temple of Doom. Whatever the hell this is. The obligatory bird's eye view to make you realize how high up you are shot. All of a sudden, I'm getting Legends of the Hidden Temple flashbacks. Game is actually trying to convince me that people from the 13th century had the resources, materials, and technology to create a room-sized transformative model of the Himalayas. But hey, video game logic, eh? I'm still in a dream state This is the closest thing to teabagging as you're gonna get in this game. All right, you're gonna be fine. The it's gonna be okay when it's really not cliche. Heads up, Elena! I'm okay. Ha! Elena survives that. So, this little man is Drake. Are you fucking serious? He's like four inches shorter than you. It appears you have nothing to bargain with, Mr. Drake. And yet, you will keep him alive, thus proving what a terrible villain you are. No, seriously, Lazarevich literally killed Elena's cameraman a minute ago. Yet he's not going to kill Drake after he's gotten the thing that he wanted? Return to the staging ground, prepare to move out. You, come with me. You, take care of them. This is completely going against his character. Weak. Matrix reloaded! What are you doing? Come on! <laughs> Man, you guys suck at shooting. Honor among thieves, huh? Wah, wah. Roll credits. Random spawning enemies. So we clearly see that Lazarevich is boarding the train. And earlier, Nate said this. Flynn knew she was with me. If Lazarevich finds out she double-crossed him, you know what he'll do to her. So why is it that when we finally get to Chloe, she's still alive? I mean, surely Flynn would have told Lazarevich about Chloe's double-crossing in the train. So I'm going to send the entire following sequence because of that. Inexplicable zip lines out of nowhere! I love the smell of train yards in the morning. Nate, just fuck off. Fuck off with your bootleg apocalypse now puns. Ah yes, the infamous train sequence. Don't get me wrong, it's still a cool segment, but it doesn't deserve nearly the amount of praise that it gets. So for that, I'm sinning it. And because I've played a simpler and better train sequence in Siphon Filter 2. I see that you still can't throw grenades back at your enemies. We go from a sunny, partially cloudy equatorial setting to a completely icy and snowy setting in a span of 10 minutes. This mini boss is invulnerable to gunshots, yet the only way to defeat him is by punching him. <laughs> The mini-boss who was invulnerable to gunshots dies by a gunshot in a cutscene. Get off the train, Nate. What are you talking about? You have any idea what I've been through? I never asked for any of your bloody heroics. Chloe, come on, we don't have time for this. You're right, so get off the train while you still can. And leave you with them. 
You made your choice. Chloe decides to not go with Drake, despite the fact that Lazarevich will soon find out that she's a double-crosser and her life will be ended. Convenient propane tanks are convenient. How does the dagger end up this far away from Nate when it was in his possession before the train derailed? I mean, Nate still has his guns, so there's really no excuse for this. All of a sudden, I'm getting the Empire Strikes Back flashbacks. Emma. You know, I appreciate the fact that they let Tenzin speak in his native language without giving us subtitles. It encourages the player to understand what he's trying to communicate by just using body language and actions. Minus one sin. I followed the tracks to the wreckage. What the hell happened? I think the bigger question is how the hell did you end up in this very village where Drake is at? Did you come across Tenzin somehow? And if so, how do you all of a sudden know how to speak his native language? Details, man. They are important. Where did you find this? Borneo. Why? This is the key to Shambhala. Yeah, pretty sure we already established that earlier in the game. You know, that whole golden passport to Shambhala? Granted, Elena wasn't there, but we the player already know this. The game, once again, must think we have the memory span of a fly. You're just lucky to be alive. Yeah, you know, people are always telling me how lucky I am. But the truth is, everything I touch turns to shit. Nate. No, Elena, I'm done. Now, come on, I'm through playing the hero. I feel like I've seen this before. Fine. It's me, okay? I am quitting. Are you coming or not? This is crazy. It's got to be what he's after, Nate. Then Lazarevich really is a nut job. He's chasing a myth. You mean the same myth that you were chasing after, too? Wrestling moves. Also, quick time events. Even though Tenzin is a bouse for owning this yeti, it's still a saving the hero in the nick of time cliche. Opens to the exact page he needs. Oh, Jesus. They were SS. Not what's the muscle? Uh, Nazis. Nazi? Well, of course Nazis are involved. This tank battle is easily the best boss fight in the game. It's certainly better than the train sequence. This is a segment worth taking off a sin. Whoa, what are you doing? I'm gonna clear the road. With what? That measly pistol that you have? Here, take the wheel. What? Just take it. Why didn't you just let me drive in the first place? Elena would be excellent at gaming sins. Literal game of hot potato. But I will retract that sin because Uncharted turns into a game of vehicular combat. As if I didn't have enough Temple of Doom flashbacks, I might as well be watching it. Nathan Drake, prepare to meet Kali in hell. <laughs> this monastery hides the secret path to Shambhala. You must get the dagger back, find the secret path, and destroy the stone before he gets his hands on it. Drake, you have to believe. Oh. Schaefer. Character dies right after spilling crucial information slash inspirational words cliche. Okay. I think we should split up. Splitting from the group plot cliche. I see that they still haven't improved on these rope mechanics. For the sake of logic, Nate has the perfect opportunity to kill Lazarevich and Flynn right now. Rescue Chloe, retrieve the dagger, go to Shambhala, battle the supernatural enemies, fuck off and leave. But instead he just eavesdrops. What an asshole. I'll, uh, I'll try to smooth things over with him. Just stay here. See what you can work out. Wait, where did Lazarevich and Flynn disappear to? And how could they have gone so far away as to not hear Nate and Chloe's conversation? And why wasn't there a timer for the player to solve this puzzle before Lazarevich and Flynn returned to this room? Jesus, details, man. When will you learn? Just do one thing for me. Take that son of a bitch down. Chloe says this despite the fact that she has now twice abandoned Drake to go back with Lazarevich. And one of those reasons didn't make any sense. And she is now going to abandon Drake for the third freaking time. I should have killed you myself when I had the chance. No shit, Sherlock. Just because you admit your mistake does not mean you are free from getting sinned. I should have killed you myself when I had the chance. Not a mistake I will make twice. Yeah, it will. Now. You will open the passage to Shambhala. Or you could just kill him and take the dagger and open the road to Shambhala yourself. I feel like Nathan Drake is like Master Chief. His defining characteristic is luck. Are you a student of history, Mr. Drake? Literally said 20 seconds ago that he wouldn't make the same mistake in failing to kill Drake. Now wants to monologue. Now, 
One we will use as a lesson, and the other we will use as incentive to cooperate. You choose. This is bullshit, Nate. Yeah, don't play into his game. You want my help, you let them go. This is not a negotiation! Who would you sacrifice, and who would you save? What, this one? You want to save this one? Or maybe this one? Hmm? You know what, enough of this shit. All right, quit the theatrics. I'll do what you want. That was easy. Fake ass loading screen. All of a sudden, I'm getting Tomb Raider 3 flashbacks. It was bound to happen. <laughs> so, this entire time, it only takes a single shotgun blast to kill a Yeti. Glad to know I wasted all that ammo. Looks like it's the end of the road, mate. No, 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 no. Not yet. I want him to see Shambhala and die knowing that I have taken it from him. You fucking said that you wouldn't be making a mistake again, you dumb bastard! Discount hunk. Oh, I see that Shambhala is just out in the open. I mean, unless we've warped into an alternate dimension, this place should have been easily visible by any sort of aircraft by now. You know, if Schaefer killed his expedition team and nobody else has made it this far into Shambhala, then I wonder why there are random guns just lying around here. Of course, it's video game purposes. No, Chloe, we're going after the Chintamani star. <laughs> what? We have to stop Lazarevich. And how exactly do you plan on doing that? Uh, Chloe, didn't you say this earlier? Just do one thing for me. Take that son of a bitch down. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Just like in the last Uncharted game, we are stuck fighting the supernatural enemies near the end. Only these guys are way more fun to fight. But I'm still gonna sin this game for rehashing the same plot outline of the last game. This is only a sin if you eliminate the video and leave only the audio. There he is. Lazarevich. How the fuck did you spot him all the way down there with no binoculars? Bravo, shut up. Flynn possesses the power of teleportation. He was nowhere to be found throughout this entire scene until now. This isn't a movie. When lines like this are in a video game, it doesn't come off nearly as clever as the developers might think. Parting gift from Lazarevich. Okay, I can overlook the fact that Lazarevich gave Flynn this grenade, shot him, and Flynn actually going along with the plan of waiting for Drake to blow himself and Drake up. The real sin here is that I don't get to kill Flynn myself. Also, Elena survives that. Barely, but she survives that. Head for the gate. Go as fast as you can. What, what, what do you mean? No. No way. Look, Chloe, I have to end this. No, you don't. Don't you dare take on this stupid crusade. Seriously? Are we really arguing about this now? At the bottom of the ninth? The eleventh hour? The most crucial point when Elena is injured? <laughs> After all the shit that Nate has gone through in this game, I die from that? Hold your fire! Hold your fire! He's mine. Villain wants to prove what a badass he is by taking on the protagonist himself cliche. Now, I'll admit, it's a pretty decent boss fight, but it's still a sin. You think I am a monster, but you're no different from me, Drake. The obligatory running away while things are collapsing segment. Chloe. No. My turn to walk away. You mean like you already have multiple times throughout this game? Well, I am very happy to see Sully, how the hell did he get here? He never knew exactly where Nate was going in Nepal, and this isn't exactly the most technologically advanced village in the world. I think I will chalk it up to convenience as usual. Uh, which way'd Chloe go? See you later. Oh no. <laughs> You're a dirty old man, Sullivan. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sully is a dirty old man, trying to get in that Chloe ass. Sully is a dirty old man. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, how scared were you that I was going to die? Four. Four? Yeah, why? A four. four. Yeah. You were at least an eight. An eight? You were a total eight. An eight? Those guardian things were an eight. Are you kidding me? Yeah, those were terrifying. What's a ten? Clowns? Scared of clowns, cliche. 